book three, chapter nine of A Tale of Two Cities is called The Game Made. Mr. Jarvis Lorry is appalled that Jerry Cruncher has been body snatching illegally on the side and threatens to report Jerry when they get back to England. But Jerry defends himself, then says his son is old enough to take over Jerry's position at Telson's and Jerry can make amends by becoming a grave digger and burying bodies rather than digging them up. Lori softens slightly and says he needs to see Jerry repent in action, not in words. Sidney Carton comes out of the other room with Barsad, bidding the spy adieu. Carton tells Lori that if things don't go well for Darnay, he has access to the prisoner once. <gasps> Lori cries and Carton tells him he's a good man and a true friend, but Carton's grief is obvious. Carton remarks that Lori has led a long and useful life, and when Lori says no one will mourn him, reminds him that Lucy and her child will do so, for which he can be thankful. Carton suggests that if he had not been useful, trusted, respected, and loved, Lori's 78 years would be 78 heavy curses. They talk of Lori's childhood memories, and Carton walks Lori to Lucy's gate, promising to be in court in the morning. Carton then walks to La Force Prison, where the Wood Sawyer recommends Carton go and watch tomorrow's executions. Next, Carton stops at a pharmacy, where he buys several items the pharmacist warns to keep separate. Back on the street, Carton remembers the words he read at his father's graveside. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Outside a theater, a woman and her daughter are trying to cross a muddy road. Carton carries the little girl over the mud, asking for a kiss as he puts her down. He walks nearly all night, hearing the Bible passage in the echoes of his footsteps. In the morning, he naps on the riverbank. Then Carton goes to the tribunal. When Darnay comes in, Lucy's look of encouragement and love brightens Carton's heart. The prosecutor reports that three people have denounced Darnay. Monsieur Defarge, Madame Defarge, and Dr. Manette himself. <gasps> Dr. Manette protests loudly, ah! saying this is a fraud and he would never denounce his son-in-law. Monsieur Defarge testifies that when he stormed the Bastille, he found a written paper hidden behind a stone in Dr. Manette's cell. The president of the tribunal dramatically orders the paper read. Here, Sidney Carton is the generous, kind, loving person Lucy has known him to be. Carton's kindness to others and his mysterious plan foreshadow his selfless sacrifice. But why did Carton buy several substances from a pharmacist that should not be mixed together? Also, Dickens foreshadowed the existence of the buried paper earlier in the novel when Darnay told Dr. Manette the story of the writings found in a prisoner's cell. What could it mean?